This is a short video to introduce the type factor in R. R has a special type for categorical variables that it calls factor. It turns out the uh, type factor was introduced quite a while ago in the programming language R as a memory saving trick, or at least that's the only honest justification I can understand. Though some in the R community have come to really distaste it because it comes with a number of practical costs. Uh, and moreover, some packages have come to rely, maybe rely isn't the right word, but use to a certain extent this type. Uh, specifically, the package ggplot2 is one of the packages that has come to use quite a bit the type factor in R. So this video is going to do a quick introduction of a, the type factor on a small example that we just kind of make up, and then I will dive into an example using ggplot and how factors play a role. So let's just go ahead and create a vector of strings, which in R has type character, you know, red, gold, and green. Now, the structure of x is, you can see, characters. Uh, specifically, it's a vector of characters, but it in fact has type character in the weird world of R. Now, in R, there is a, a type conversion function named factor after the type it's converting to, and you can convert a vector to a factor. And you can see that the conversion works quite well. We now have a factor with three levels. Now remember, levels is the statistics word for values a categorical variable can take on. So here we have one variable, f, with the levels uh, red, gold, and green, though you will see that the type conversion function factor has sorted the levels as they are stored in the variable f. So it goes gold, green, and then red. And you'll also recognize that there are these integers following this description. That is showing you, although it's not obvious, the internal representation of the elements of the factor f. Now here is where the memory saving trick comes in. If your factors are quite long, it's very costly on a computer to hold, to store in memory, multiple copies of maybe the same levels of a categorical variable. Like as if red showed up five times, gold showed up 20 times, and green showed up seven times. It would be very expensive to hold all of those levels in memory. It would be much cheaper to hold an integer representation of them. So in fact, there is another type conversion function, as.integer, and if you call it on a factor, it tells you the integers it's storing to represent the levels of the factor f. And the odd ordering here is just really showing up in that look. In alphabetical order, red comes last, so red comes third. And in alphabetical order, gold comes first, and green comes second. So here, this integer representation is really just the ordering of the integers that are stored to represent the factor in order to save memory. Let's dive into a quick example um, where we see the interaction between the library ggplot2, and here I'm just going to paste the donkey's dataset or the code to read in the donkey's data set, which we've used before. So I'll just load that data set, and I'm just going to quickly jump into an example where I plot on the x-axis the categorical variable age. Now, you've got to be careful here. If you look at the structure of this data frame, age has these less than and greater than and dash symbols in it, which means R can't represent those levels as doubles or something that you would expect age to be. So in fact, 
the read.csv function has by default turned the variable age into a factor. That's quite subtle and a lot of the reason some people in the R community are getting upset about the factor uh, type. So if you're careful with how I used the function ggplot, you can see quite well that we get a good jitter plot here because we have each level of age showing up for the appropriate points within that level. Now, if you didn't have age as a factor already, you could just use the type conversion function right in place to convert age to a factor right here. Since age is already a factor, this is gonna have no effect in my example, but it will be a good uh, reminder to you all about how to convert maybe categorical variables in a data set that have been encoded as integers. If they're encoded as integers, R will read them in as integers. But if they should reasonably be categorical variables, then here, this highlighted part, is how you'll want to convince R that it should treat those values as factors, as a factor. So this is going to be my big example right here on how you can force R to recognize a variable as a factor. You got to be careful though because you can wrap any old vector in factor. So I'm going to suggest smarter than your computer you must be. And I'm going to spell must right. For instance, if you took the variable weight, which is reasonably a numerical variable, you could but shouldn't call factor on a numeric variable. What you've got to realize from this example that I've given us here is that in order for violin plots or box plots to work, you need to have multiple observations within each level. You need to have many, in fact, observations within each level. Since we're estimating one box plot and one violin plot for each level, when we're making plots like this, you need to give enough data to each level to appropriately estimate the statistics underlying the box plot or the violin plot. And if you force a numerical variable that has all unique values in it to the type factor, you would be forcing one observation per made up level. That's a bad idea. So you have to be smarter than your computer and you should not convert numerical variables to type factor.